Hi, my name is Peter, if you didn't know, if this is your first time watching me, who knows? Anyway, uh, with the drop of the new Sony camera, CV-E1 that I like, there's been a lot of controversy in the comment sections of my videos. <laughs> A lot of people that are disgusting about why they're dropping the camera. And in my opinion, I think that the camera is great. I think it's fantastic to see Sony dropping a camera that is going to be more affordable for people that are, you know, wanting to get into the business. And as I said in one of my previous videos, it doesn't make your A7S III camera bad in any sort of way. Your camera still has the functions. However, though, the firmware updates that Sony have not dropped for the A7S III is horrendous. I think it's incredible bad that they're not putting out updates to a camera that has the potential to become just as good as the a7r5 almost i think the biggest difference is the processor though so maybe this camera can't do the same processing as that camera i don't know but i wanted to share my thoughts on the future of the filmmaking cameras from Sony. I have no idea if this is true. These are just my thoughts. And I feel like in the video that I made between the A7S III and the ZV-E1, there was a lot of things that didn't really land right. So I thought we should dive into that a little bit further and share my thoughts on you know, where I think that things are going to go. When it comes to the A7S series, I've been using it for two and a half, three years almost, and I think it's a fantastic camera, especially the A7S III. I didn't have the opportunity to use the A7S II camera when that was released because I wasn't interested in cameras back then. The things that I have been able to produce with the Sony A7S III is nothing, it's nothing, nothing, it's nothing, nothing short, but amazing to be honest for for someone like me to be able to use a camera and learn a camera and to be able to produce something such as rivals 3 or rivals 2 or rivals 1 that for me is mind-blowing because when i started using a sony action camera i never thought i would be able to get that image quality from a camera like this. Now that the camera is a little bit older, it also starts to feel a little bit old. Not in the sense of what you get for the camera because it's still a workhorse. It's still one of the best cameras that you can buy for work if you don't want to, you know, skip out on the viewfinder and go for the FX3. But when it comes to these two cameras, I think that this signals the end of the A7S series. And that is what I said in my previous video. And what I mean, meant by that is that the A7S series is not really having a place anymore. I don't really see where the S series is going to fit in if they release an FX3 Mark II or an FX30 Mark II or a ZV-E1 Mark II. As much as the viewfinder is a great thing to have in the A7S series, it's not a necessary thing. I haven't used it, as I said, you know, for anything except for photos. I think it's like two times. The FX3, when I used that, I was a little bit torn about what kind of camera that was because it came kind of close to the release of the A7S III. But now I see that the cinema line features of the FX3 is what makes it such a good camera. Especially now that I've been shooting with the FX6 as well, I kind of understand the whole cinema line feature and cinema line lineup. Looking at where Sony wants to go with their cameras, they've always been trying to have a small form factor in their cameras. And that is something that I personally like. Doesn't mean that you have to like it. We all have our opinions. I'm just sharing mine. The Sony cameras right now are getting to a point where there's so many good cameras, right? You have the A7R5, which is photo-oriented camera. You have the A1, you have the A9, A92, you have the A7 IV, <laughs> you have the A7S III, you have the FX30, you have the FX3. The incentive of dropping an A7S IV is where I can see things going. What I think is going to happen is that the FX series is gonna sort of like eat up the S series. The S series is gonna be implemented into the FX3 Mark II. I can't think of anything that I would like to have in an A7S Mark IV. The only thing would be an internal ND filter, but that is cinema line feature. And then maybe 6K, not something that I would like to have or need to have, but it would be a cool feature. Time code, all that stuff, and the possibility to import LUTs, but all of those things are cinema line features. So why would Sony drop that in an A7S IV before dropping an FX3 
Mark II. That is what I really can't see the logic in. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just sharing my thoughts here of what I think is going to happen. And I can be wrong. That's the cool thing with, you know, thinking about things. And I like to discuss this because there's so many different things to discuss when it comes to new cameras and tech and all that stuff. But I also feel like there's a lot of people that are defending the things they use. Just because you have an A7S III camera, this has got to be the best camera that has ever existed. If this is the camera that fits your need, perfect. If this is the camera, that fits your need, perfect. If both of these cameras fits your needs, perfect. For me, I just like to have the options of different cameras and I like the fact that things are dropping and we can decide on what kind of camera that we want to get. As I talked about previously, this camera is not a workhorse. It's not gonna be the one that you bring on to shoot to shoot music videos as compared to something like the A7S III. But if you're mainly doing videos, then I would probably go for the FX3 instead because the A7S III has honestly served pretty good. I'm not saying that you should sell your camera, don't do it because this is a very good camera. But if you're in the market of buying a new camera, especially a video camera, the A7S III is probably not the best option when it comes to video as compared to the FX3, but it's still a great option. If you just want to learn how to use a camera, but still go into full frame and have the possibility of have all the intelligence auto modes so that you can start using this, that is where I think that the ZVE one kind of has its place. I think it's fascinating because we're we're reaching a point where the cameras that are released are so incredibly good right now. So we are kind of nitpicking on things. We're picking apart the softness of the image. Even though when you're looking at your TV, you, you'll barely see a difference. And for those of you commenting that you could see a difference between these two cameras and the image quality between them, that is purely and I mean purely only because I did not expose one of these properly because it's exactly the same sensor. You can't see any difference between the image. And if you've been around on this channel for quite some time, then you probably know that I have not been buying different cameras and returning different cameras for the last three years. I have been using the A7S III for almost everything that I made. It's been one of the cameras that I've loved. I still love it. I will not sell this camera. And the only reason that I sold my other A7S III is because I felt like this would be a better option to bring with me on a run and gun and day-to-day -day basis than this one, because this is heavier. This is bigger, bulkier, and honestly, this serves my purpose. And I mean that, again, my purpose very well. So whatever your arsenal is consisting of right now, don't feel bad because there's new camera gear dropping. The things that you have still serves as a just as a good camera as it did yesterday or a year ago it's not gonna be worse just because there's something new on the market i'm probably gonna use the zve1 for the coming five years and a7s3 for another three years but now instead of having this or this as my main camera i'm gonna have this as my main camera but this is still gonna be a b camera in case something happens and when i'm doing my talking head videos i'm using my fx6 and when i'm shooting music videos i want to shoot bigger client projects i'm using my fx6 or even my ronin 4d i don't know i just wanted to i just wanted to make this video because i felt like it got like it felt infected with the release of a new camera. I don't know why, because people should not be feeling bad about a new camera dropping. I totally get the firmware thing part. I do think that Sony definitely should take responsibility for not dropping firmware updates as often as they could do, because that is just horrendous. We all know that the Sony A7S III would be capable of having focused breathing compensation. So I hope that there's going to be a firmware update. I doubt it, but I guess we'll see. I would love to hear your thoughts. Where do you think that things are going to go in the future? Because every camera that we buy nowadays is just so good. There's nothing that I want from a camera anymore that I can't get. And I mean, like, that the whole reason why we upgrade our equipment is to make something that we couldn't do before. So if you feel that you still can do everything that you're doing right now with your A7S III, then keep your A7S III. It's not gonna get bad. But you also don't have to judge anyone else for wanting to have a new camera if they have been using their old camera for a very long time. Okay, there you go. It's just camera talk. Drop a comment. I would love to hear what you think. Okay.
Peter från Sweden, out. Don't forget to subscribe. All the good stuff, huh? Hej då!